The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. For Real Agriculture, I'm Kelvin Hepner, and pleased to be joined now by Manitoba agriculture entomologist John Givlowski. And John, uh, we've seen more issues with armyworm in uh, here in Manitoba in cereal crops this year than in uh, in the past or in recent memory. Why is that? Why has armyworm been an issue? Well, armyworms are an insect that migrates in, so it's a purposeful migration that they do. They're they're a um, uh, a light brown moth with a little tiny white spot on their wings. And uh, they don't overwinter here, but again, they migrate north. And this year, there was a really big migration that came in. Uh, It looks like it probably arrived in Manitoba the last week in May, the first week in June. We've got some pheromone baited traps set up, and that seems to indicate that was the time period when they arrived in this big migration. And it wasn't just a particular area of the province. In some years, it might just be the eastern part of the province or a regional effect. But this year, um, they migrated in in big numbers and they basically were finding them all agricultural regions and as far north as the Paw. Okay. They migrate intentionally though, or would this have had to do with the, a strong south wind, for example? The strong south winds can help, but uh, wind or no wind, they do have this purposeful migration north that they do. Okay. So it, it's a little different than something like diamondback moth, where it is strictly wind assisted, not a purposeful migration. Okay. Take us through the, the thresholds in that whole decision making process when you're scouting for armyworms in terms of, uh, of taking control action against them. So yeah, so it's the caterpillars that of course do the damage mm-hmm. and they have a preference for uh, grassy plants. So um, when they're laying their eggs, they really like dense grassy stands to lay eggs into. So something like fall rye, winter wheat, forage grasses, potentially spring cereals too. Um, especially if they're earlier seeded. So that's where you'd be looking. And the easiest way to check is measure out an area that's roughly about a foot square. So um, I use a triangle that's got three sides to it. I just put that into the soil and mark out my foot square, but you can just use a ruler or whatever. Um, Shake the plants in the area in case you've got some on the plants just to knock them to the ground. Now during the day, they're nocturnal, they most should be on the ground anyway. And then you have to start picking through any uh, stubble, debris, uh, clumps of soil, and even check in cracks in the soil because they're trying to hide during the day. Mm-hmm. So you want to do a fairly uh, thorough assessment inside that foot square area and just see what your numbers are. Uh, in uh, your cereal crops, your small grains, if you're over about four, on average about four in a foot square, that's what we consider a threshold. If you have started to see them clip heads, then lower that to about two per square foot. Okay. What does it mean if we see them climbing the stem and eating at the top of the plant? Well, it could mean a couple of things. Sometimes you will find some on the plant on cloudy, cool days. Um, but if you, see a, uh, if you see them climbing the plant um, on a sunny day, often they're not well. And one of the reasons they might be doing that is there's a a little wasp called Cotesia. It's what we call a parasitoid of armyworms. And they will lay eggs, many eggs actually, into a caterpillar. Um, And when the caterpillar uh, is infected like this, eventually uh, when the Cotesia larvae that are now living inside the armyworm are ready to emerge, the armyworms will climb to the top of the plant and kind of uh, cling or or be uh, um, uh, stationary there and you will get this massive um, movement of the Cotesia larva out of the armyworm. It happens almost instantaneously where dozens of the parasitoids will be emerging out of one individual armyworm and very quickly they will spin pupa cases and it almost looks like an egg sac on the top of the cereal grains. So if you start to see what look like egg sacs up there, they could be pupal clusters of Cotesia. 
Okay, and that might mean that you have a, a natural pest that's taking care of the armyworm population or managing it? So yes, in this case, um, it's, it's a parasitoid that is naturally found around here. I said pest, uh, I meant beneficial insect. It's a, it's I guess. a beneficial yeah. insect, exactly. Um, their role is strictly uh, beneficial. They, they're parasitizing caterpillars. Armyworm is being one of them, but they will also parasitize cutworms. And we've seen them actually parasitize diamondback moth as well. So it's a pretty good group. Would, would that be the main predator or parasitoid for armyworms, or are there others that we should also be lo looking for or aware of? There's others. Um, now, uh, Cotesia is one of the main parasitoids, and there are others of those. But there's also predators, and there's a lot of things that would like to feed on cutworms. And one group that really stands out is the ground beetles. They're super numerous. There's a lot of different species. Uh, in Canada, there's uh, about 980 species of ground beetles. They're super common and abundant. Um, and they like things like caterpillars. Um, in fact, we've got a species here called the fiery caterpillar hunter, fairly large ground beetle, and they'll consume several um, caterpillars in a day. So if, if they're in a field with a lot of armyworms, each individual one will consume several uh, armyworms in a day. Okay. Finally, John, as you're getting calls about armyworm this year, what is the, the main message or, or main point that you're trying to get across to agronomists and, and growers that you're hearing from? Uh, I'm encouraging them to uh, scout your fields and know what your levels are like. Um, once they get to be about an inch to an inch and a half long, uh, they're probably fully grown. They will start pupating soon. We do get a second cycle in a year, but usually that second cycle isn't as damaging as the first cycle. Parasitoids could be a reason. And often uh, our cereal grains are too mature really when that second cycle is happening for, that, for them to be an issue. Uh, the other thing too that a lot of people have been asking about is, well, what if I've got something like canola or soybeans next to a cereal field that's really had a lot of foliation? Will they move into those other crops and feed? And the short answer is potentially. Um, even though cereals are their favorite foods, they do have these secondary hosts that they will feed on, canola, soybeans, a few other crops, but those are secondary. It's not where they want to be, it's where they might end up once they've eaten what they prefer. Um, if you do see uh, a big movement of them, now they call them army worms because if they do defoliate uh, a stand uh, pretty severely, they can move uh, across a road, say, into a neighboring crop. If you see that happening, um, just do an edge pass along the secondary host, and that is usually enough. Okay. Are there certain insecticide groups that you prefer or that you recommend in terms of taking action against them? Well, there's, there is a group uh, called the diamides, uh, Corrigin being one of the products in it, that uh, very good against armyworms. It's a bit pricier than some of the other products that are out there. Uh, there's pyrethroids that uh, can work. Um, uh, if it's uh, an edge spray, something with a bit of residual though is a good strategy. That way uh, you'll catch them moving in for a several day period. All right. Thanks for your time again today, John. Okay, thank you.